the Georgia Bulldogs take on the Samford Bulldogs here today. I'm Taylor Zarzer. You saw Matt Stinchcomb on the field. Alyssa Lang is between the hedges. You'll see her in just a moment. A historically great defense was on display in 2021 as the Georgia Bulldogs allowed 13 defensive touchdowns in 15 games. And they didn't allow any last week over in Atlanta as they whipped the Oregon Ducks 49 to three. But as great as that defense was last year, now they're looking for a historically great offense this season. They scored touchdowns on their first seven possessions. They only allowed three points on defense. It was a complete performance last week as they whipped old coach Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks. Stetson Bennett back at the quarterback position this year, finding one of the best freshmen in America last year, Brock Bowers. Bennett now a Heisman Trophy candidate after his terrific start in week number one. So you can rely on Old Faithful, but you gotta mix in some fresh blood too, right? For more on the true freshmen that are making an impact, let's go between the hedges and Alyssa Lane. Let's start with the freshman defensive back Malachi Starks who put the entire country on notice a week ago in that Oregon game with that diving interception that we saw a million times on SportsCenter and rightfully so. We talked to head coach Kirby Smart. He said, yeah, he showed flashes in the spring. By the time we got to fall camp, there was absolutely no doubt we were going to have to put him on the football field. Also on that defense, true freshman Michael Williams who stepped up on that defensive line as well. He was challenged in the offseason. Hey, we need you to be out there. We need you to be ready purely from a depth standpoint. We're trying to replace this guy. I don't know if you know his name. Trayvon Walker, who went number one in the NFL draft this past season. Of course, linebacker Nolan Smith made some comments back in August, basically warning us, saying that Mike Hill is basically a mini version of Trayvon Walker. He proved it last week. Obviously, many things that coaches want to see from both of these guys, but a pretty good problem for Kirby Smart to have, losing NFL talent replacing them with freshmen who are ready to step up and that doesn't even count all the other guys that this defense is returning Taylor we might need you to step up into the booth here oh wait a minute Mr. Stitch comes already back wow how about the speed let's soak in a home football game at Sanford Stadium the toss. They elect to take the football first. This is the third ever meeting in the Battle of the Bulldogs. Georgia leads the series 2-0. Last time they met it was in 2017. Dogs beat Samford 42-14. Samford is led by Michael Hires. He's a Southern Conference Player of the Week after throwing for 289 yards and four touchdowns in a win over top 10 Kennesaw State last week. Old friend Chris Hatcher against his buddy Kirby Smart today here at Sanford Stadium. Hires, everybody covered up, swings it out to Jay Stanton. Stanton gets back up to the 24. It's actually going to be a loss of a yard on the play. Smile Munden on the tackle. Stitch, how are we feeling over there? You sweating any? I got a little cardio in today, pal. This stadium has not gotten any smaller. What a great opening from you out in front of that tunnel. Straight ahead, Stanton runs at the dogs for a couple of yards up to the 26. It's third and nine. So this Georgia defense tries to force a three and out. Yeah, and the challenge here, and we talked to Chris Hatcher about this, is protection. So you want to make sure you don't make a bad mistake right here. If there's nothing there, tuck it and run, punt the football away. Look at 88 at the bottom of your screen. They swing it back out to Stanton. Stanton on a lateral goes up to the 28-yard line. It'll be fourth down and seven from there, and Sanford's punting team will come onto the field. Bradley Porcelato, graduate from Melbourne, Australia, will punt it deep to Ladd McConkie. Bradley 
Salado's in trouble. He barely got that off. I don't, maybe a dog might have gotten a piece of that. And McConkey, a fair catch at the 44 yard line. There's no question the dogs came after that punt. And it really is surprising they actually didn't get a piece of it. They must have. Salado got knocked over his tea kettle there towards the end. Just quick three and out by that defense. Just a 28 yard punt extend to Stetson Bennett. The sixth year graduate player from Blackshear, Georgia, lifelong Georgia fan. There he is in 2014. Always wanted to be a dog, left, went to Jones Community College, came back, now a three year starter. A guy that's destined to have his name all over this city for the rest of his life. He swings it out to A.D. Mitchell, and we'll get just a few. Last week was the best game of his career, statistically, Stitch, after all that he did last year in winning a national championship, throws for a career-high 368 yards. And somewhat indicative of what they expect from this offense, as you see A.D. Mitchell coming up a little bit gimpy off of that now screen. Keep an eye on his status after one play. He's dealt with injuries throughout his career. It's a four-yard pickup. This is Kenny McIntosh. McIntosh, the leading Kenny receiver McIntosh. last week for Georgia out of the backfield. Gets up to the 50, and Kirby Smart must have said it ten times in the meeting yesterday with a stench. Established the ground game today. Yeah, Todd Munkin as well. You know, they pointed out last week versus Oregon, they anticipated some things from Dan Lanning and his defense. And so they attacked the perimeter. They want to see if they can get downhill in the running game. Not a great first and second down to set up this third. They were eight of eight on third down when Stetson Bennett was in the game last week. Nine of 10 overall. A little pass across the middle and in stride. It is caught by Jackson Meeks, his first catch of the season, first down Georgia. Well, we talked with Stetson Bennett about the passing game. Well, the challenge has been health at wide receiver. They run very deep. Fakes the swing, wants to throw it deep. Meeks is open, and it's just barely overthrown. Second down. Stetson Bennett standing on about the minus 45-yard line. He knows that he just missed one downfield. And one of the things that he's done, he's done an excellent job with his deep ball. And you can see there Jackson Meeks did behind the coverage an opportunity, but about five yards. Too much juice on that football. Did you see it plus territory taking a shot early in this game? Andy Mitchell's already in the tent, by the way, Stench. As he, you said he came off limping. Milton, Kendall Milton gets inside the 40 down to the 38 where Ty Hardiman makes the tackle. Milton over 500 career rushing yards and once again, as was discussed by our friends Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge last week, you got to replace Samir White and James Cook. This year it's Milton, McIntosh, and Dejon Edwards. And there was an interesting element that Todd Munkin pointed out. Last year they had two James Cook types. The other was Kenny McIntosh. And so this year they have a more focused in the passing game on number six who's in there now. And of course would be McIntosh, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. On this third and five. Bennett moving the pocket to the sideline, and that's a perfect ball to Marcus Rosemi Jack Saint, 11 yards and another Georgia first down. Now going back to what we were saying earlier about the passing game, Stetson Bennett, we said, what is it about these receivers? He says, I feel like I know what they're going to be doing. You see Rosemi Jack Saint catches it right there along the sideline. It's a little help from the guys there in the, uh, on the boundary. But the, the idea is, hey, I feel as if I can anticipate what these receivers are doing because of the time they've had together. And great protection up front on that last play. McIntosh follows the right side of the line. Tate Ratledge, of course, the right guard that was hurt in that Clemson game to start the season. Warren McClendon is over there at right tackle. You're looking at the left tackle, Broderick Jones. There's a couple of battles going on up front right now, Stinch, for playing time. Yeah, they feel as if they roll about seven or eight deep. You know, those three tackles, they're saying all these guys can play and deserve to play. We fully expect to see some rotation on the edge and at guard. Dejon Edwards in the game for the first time on second and seven. Throw right to him, wide open on the swing pass. First down, Georgia inside the 15. 
Dejon Edwards, as you pointed out, you know, in the past, we've seen him come in and literally end games. They just feed him, turn him into a nine on seven drill. But now he's getting some early looks and early reps, showing great hands that time out of the backfield. Georgia was seven of seven scoring touchdowns in the red zone last week. And McConkey got a hand on it, but couldn't grab it. Second down. Well, McConkey was one of those guys Stetson Bennett was talking about, where literally said, I see it the way he sees it. If I were to play wide receiver, I see the defense the way Lad McConkey sees it. And that is expanding to his fellow wide receivers. A lot of guys where they build that rapport. Touchdown running, touchdown receiving. Last week for McConkey is Milton is back in. Swing it to Kendall, looking for blocking. Patient gets all the way up to the five and yard line. It will be third and goal from there. Joseph Mira makes the tackle. It's just so challenging. I mean, look at Darnell Washington. That's basically a tackle that's pulling out in space. 275. I'm going to give him 280 pounds if he's an ounce. And of course, you've already got Brock Bowers, who is a tight end body that can play at receiver, and already five different wide receivers having touched the ball in this game. Yes, yeah, the 11th play of the drive. They're already two for two on third down, 11 for 12 on the season, trying to convert another. They go to the ground game, and this one's going to be stopped in the backfield. McIntosh game tackled Isaiah Richardson there first. Excellent job by Isaiah Richardson. He diagnosed quickly and was downfield. You can see on fourth down, no hesitancy. Georgia going for it in the low red zone. Need to get inside the two. Snap count. See if they're just trying to draw them off. And we saw this in Thursday in practice where they did this. and It was a dummy cadence, like it was a freeze cadence, and then they ran a play. Play clock has expired. And you hear the fans. They felt like they were teased right there. Fourth down, go for it. Instead, they're going to go ahead and take the points. You see a couple of the early downs, trying to get the run game going a little bit. Hasn't seen a ton of running space early between the tackles. Bennett stays on the field to be the holder for Jack Podlesny, the third-year starter. Some may have a hard time believing this because Rodrigo Blankenship was amazing here in Athens. If Podlesny makes three consecutive field goals, his all-time field goal percentage would be number one ahead of Rodrigo Blankenship. This is from 27 yards. Actually, yep, make that 27. Straight ahead, and it's 3 0. Georgia on top with 7.51 to go in the first quarter. The Dogs are finally back home in Athens. SEC Network Football is brought to you by T Mobile, bringing 5G to hometowns across the SEC. Kirby Smart got his first job in coaching from that man, Chris Hatcher. You see Hatcher's family just taking the picture there with Kirby, his wife, Lori, his daughter, Tally. Hatch hired Kirby Smart, and in the first job offer he made, Kirby went up to the board, and Hatch said, draw a defense for me. Kirby put 10 players on the field, not 11, 10. Hatch said, if he's so confident he can stop him with 10, I'm hiring him. <laughs> he became the defensive backs coach for Valdosta State when Chris Hatcher was the head coach there. And the defensive coordinator for Coach Hatch that year was Will Muschamp, who, of course, is back at UGA as the co-defensive coordinator this year. Before the game, Hatch is talking to Will, telling stories. Hatch pulled a terrible prank on Muschamp one year during recruiting. He got the fax machine to not all of a sudden not work. Muschamp's expecting a fax from a recruit. And let's just say Coach Boom had a Coach Boom moment. Hires flips it out there in front to Kendall Watson, who had a terrific game last week with nine catches. Half of the catches that Samford had as a team, and he gets 10 yards here. Nice play there. Good job by Watson getting his foot in the ground and get upfield quickly. 10-yard pickup. Hires 
Going to keep it himself, and he's going to pick up a yard on what looked like a busted play. We're talking about that Valdosta State coaching staff. There's Hatch as the head coach in the background. Kirby is the defensive backs coach, and Muschamp as the defensive coordinator. Of course, Chris will go on to win the national championship for Valdosta State. Hires in trouble, feeling the pressure, and he overthrows his intended receiver, Judd Cockett, but big number 88, Jalen Carter, was all over. Georgia does a great job with this blitz. It's a cross dog, the two inside linebackers. They exchange their blitzes, they cross. It confuses the protection, and that time Dumas Johnson able to come clean and got a shot on Hires. He had a big game last week as a first year starter, and here come the dogs again. Hires somehow gets out of there, fumbles the ball, and George is on top of it. Hires trying to make something out of nothing, and Georgia player got his hand on it. Here, Dan Jackson was the one that forced the fumble, and Xavier Sori is the one that recovered it. The ball come out. They're going to see a lot of this this year. The defense is still an attacking defense. It's a great shot. Put your helmet right on the football. Dan Jackson, reminiscent of a Nicobe Dean type play from his safety position down there, put his helmet right on the ball. Really costly turnover because of the field position forfeited on what was all likely a promising start to that offensive possession. So it gives Georgia a short field at Samford's 41. This is still a little toss ahead to McIntosh, and he's got space in front, and he's tripped up down inside the 15-yard line. It is a pickup of 31. A toss into the boundary. I've been watching Georgia football. Have you seen this a time or two? Kenny McIntosh one-on-one -on -one with the safety as the alley player. All you got to do is make one man miss. It was very well blocked at the point of attack. Just like that, Georgia's right back on the doorstep again, down at the Samford 11. Now to Milton. Kendall patiently waiting for space. Gets to the eight. How about the weapons that Milton and McIntosh are in the backfield? Zamir White was the guy that primarily ran it last year, and James Cook did everything. Milton and McIntosh with similar roles this season. No question. And they talked about it. You know, Milton, a little bit bigger player, a little bit more downhill. He was slowed this fall camp with a hamstring injury. They said he was protecting it a little bit a week ago still, and you could see it in his runs. Looks like he's fully healthy here today. Pick up a four as McIntosh stands next to Stetson. Back at the 13-yard line. Bennett wants to go to the end zone. Bowers can't make the grab. Good coverage there by Wade White. It's interesting. We've seen Bowers make a catch like this before, reminiscent of his catch in the Orange Bowl. Goes up, pirouettes in the air, almost comes down with it. That's three times now. One was an overthrow, two others right off the outstretched hands of the intended receiver. Georgia has three receivers at the bottom of the screen. At the very bottom, Dylan Bell, true freshman that Todd Munkin's been raving about. Bennett looks the other way. Darnell Washington can't make the grab, and if he can't, nobody can. Fourth down. Darnell Washington is 6'7", they say. I'm going to round that up 2 to 6'8". And right here, you're giving him a chance. Throw it at the crossbar. Let him go up and make a play because he was covered working on the inside route, singled up on the outside. Just such a huge target in that time. Outstripped even his catch reads. As great as Georgia was in the red zone last week, two field goal tries so far in the red zone this week, and Pod Lesney cashes in on both of them. 6 nothing Georgia, 5.34 to go in the first. fun to watch in the 2023 NFL draft class on tape. I think you'd start with Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter. He is just that rare blend of explosive power and athleticism. They do a great job of moving him up and down the front to create mismatches. 
He's a guy that every opponent this year will have to game plan against when they play Georgia. And he's the guy the NFL is looking for, that explosive interior presence that can get to the quarterback in a hurry. So we saw the Georgia front last year have two first-round defensive linemen with Devontae Wyatt going to the Packers, Jordan Davis going to the Eagles. I think Jalen Carter, when we get to April, will be drafted higher than both of those players. Probably a lock right now to be a top-10 pick. Thank you, Jim. Down there in Mobile, Alabama, running the Risa Senior Bowls. Love getting his perspective. Jalen Carter, according to Kirby Smart, is the most complete defensive lineman that he has had in Georgia. He said he had a couple at Alabama, but none like him here. He might be the number one pick in the draft by the time the season is over with. Sanford starts at the 25-yard line. And big, number, big number 88 isn't coming onto the field just yet, but he is an every down player, unlike some other interior defensive linemen that have starred in Georgia. Yeah, you talk about like a Jordan Davis last year where he was battling his size most of his career here in Athens, but still dominant. Jalen Carter's a guy, you put him in on first down, you leave him in on third down. He's an excellent pass rusher, gets quick penetration. Myers. After the fumble, swings it out there near the 30-yard line to Chandler Smith again, the senior from Marietta playing back in his home state. Four-yard pickup. Early downs, Chris Hatcher doing a great job of moving the pocket, getting the ball out quickly. Be productive on that first down. Swings it out again, this time to Stanton. Stanton dives to the Samford bench. Nike Smith on the tackle will be third and short. Demonstrating some depth once again. Georgia has defensively new faces, sure. Tyke Smith, a guy that they didn't even have his services a season ago due to injury. To get to the 35, Stanton has no chance. He's going to lose yardage as Smile Munden was in the backfield again. Guy that has blossomed into a starter as a sophomore. Turn on the film and Smile Munden pops more than anything else because he is all over their defensive alignment. Big long player, does a great job shocking and shedding the block at the line of scrimmage. Gets upfield right now. Two tackles for loss right now. Excellent job of getting penetration at the point of attack. You know Chris Hatcher likes to go fast all the time, but you wonder if maybe he needed to slow the game down a bit. His defense has been on the field a bunch. Of course, Alato punting again to McConkie. This is a great punt. Takes McConkie all the way back to his 17-yard line. And Ladd gets it up to the 29. That's a punt of 52 yards and a return of 12. Georgia's back on offense, up six. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia. The Bulldogs with a 6-0 lead over Sanford. The offense about to go back to work, but they'll do so without their wide receiver, A.D. Mitchell. I'm told he's dealing with a left ankle injury out right now. No word yet on whether or not he'll return, guys. Wow, listen, that happened on the first play on offense. Rosamie Jack St., A.D. Mitchell, Dominic Blaylock, Kiaris Jackson, all of them been dealing with injuries throughout their Georgia careers. Stetson Bennett with McConkie in motion at the 29-yard line, and it's McIntosh straight ahead. The exact words Kirby used coming into the game, he wants to see some strain in the running game today. What does that mean, Stetson? Well, he wants to see some finish, right? And it's not just the initial contact. He wants to see you run your feet and finish those blocks. They flag that a little bit versus Oregon to see more of that now in the third series, much like last Saturday, and Marius Mims in there at right tackle for Warren McClendon. John Edwards, a fake to him. Bennett doesn't like what he sees. He's getting incredible protection, and McConkie gets open inside the 30. It's just debilitating type plays because there's nothing open downfield. You rush three. Get a decent pressure, and Seth, Seth Simmer right in the middle. And Stetson Bennett just slides to his right and throws a strike. Oh, he did he. The next play with flags all over the field. He's looking down for Meeks. Thirty-seven yard completion on the play before. This is Wayne Winkler, today's referee. 
Legal substitution, the defense had more than 11 players on the field at the snap. Five yard penalty, first down. So Georgia going so fast and Samford's not able to get off of the field. Take a look at the upper right of your screen. Or upper, yeah, upper right, yeah, you see him just barely trying to get off and he couldn't. So now that was a free play to give George the ball at the 23 yard line. This is Edwards and he's down to the 20. You see the offensive line coach Stacy Searles. That's the strain that he's talking about. You got to clean up just that one last hitter so that you can get a clean insertion into the line of scrimmage. I think Broderick Jones, the guy that was substituted in, got a lot of starts, got a couple of good reps, early meaningful snaps last year when Jamari Salyer got injured, came in in that championship game, played really well versus one of the best pass rushers in the game, Will Anderson Jr. Second and two for Bennett. See if he takes a shot here. Stetson keeps it himself. Taking on defender Seth Simmer got a hit on him right at the marker. Thomas Neville as well. They've been very active at inside linebacker. That gives you a little bit of pause. Stetson Bennett came in there, was not sliding. Took a good shot from Thomas Neville. Clean hit, big hit. Third and one. Two for two with two field goals after seven touchdowns and seven possessions last week. Third and less than a foot. A cushion in the slot. And it's an easy first down run for Milton. There's the strain you're talking about. Getting some help from his offensive line down to the 11. Great job at left guard, Xavier Truss and Cedric Van Pram. Clean into the line of scrimmage, untouched. That's a great job up front and in the trenches. And that's what they're talking about with strain. There's no position blocking on an inside run on a short yardage play. Fresh set of downs from the 11 yard line. And a toss going to Milton. Kendall breaking tackles, keeping his feet up near the three. It's interesting on those plays, and when they're already committed to running on the outside, they almost forfeit the interior defensive lineman and release to get downfield. So far this season, and this is something that came up in our meetings the other day, the perimeter blocking, the downfield blocking, even Stetson Bennett's out there talking about it. That's where you get your explosive run plays is when you've got your perimeter players blocking the way that they have. Milton again next to Bennett. It's Stetson himself. Touchdown, Georgia. Touchdown passes and a touchdown run last week for Stetson, and another this week. I wondered if this guy deserved a scholarship a few years ago. He's going to go down as one of the greatest dogs ever. Pod Lesney makes it 13 0. 11 passes, 11 runs so far for Georgia. They are 10 for 10 in the red zone this season. Talk about how they've gotten to the perimeter. Darnell Washington, that big body, a de facto tackle in space. So he's on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Watch it come all the way across. Now he's the escort. Seal the end man, quarterback. The inside defender is yours. Get some speed. Make it all the way to the edge. Stetson Bennett showing once again, they covet his ability to make plays with his legs. Great blocking by Washington. I would argue maybe tight end type blocking, not Stinchcomb tackle type blocking. I don't know, that guy, get him a couple of biscuits. He's playing offensive line at the next level. 
stick around at tight end here, of course. And they move him a lot. That's one of the things they talked about. This guy's been injured quite a bit. He's just now getting healthy, and it's his stamina. And they move him so much, and he's out in space and running routes at 280 pounds. Where's that big horse down? Hard to believe he only has 18 career catches. Sanford will get it at the 25. Coming up at 7 Eastern, 6 Central over on SEC Network Plus. Ole Miss, ranked 22nd, takes on Central Arkansas. Luke Altmeyer getting the start this week. And at 7.30 Eastern on the SEC Network, LSU off that loss to FSU, hosts Southern in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both games are also available on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app. I wouldn't say Jackson Dart was that impressive last week for Ole Miss throwing the football. Ball. Luke Altmeyer might have a shot to win that job There's tonight. No question. Yeah, he's one of the things got to protect the football better. Did not make many big plays in that game. Myers doesn't get Balls anything. Out. Zion Loeb forced the fumble, and somehow Samford got it off the carom. You know this conversation's already been had. You got to talk to hires and say, look, we're already trying to sled uphill in this ball game. We cannot afford short fields. The defense for Sanford's done an excellent job forcing two field goals. This is the end of the first They have quarter. to be better about protecting this football. It's the end of the first quarter. Hires lucky to have his football team still on the field on offense, Georgia. Back in Athens for the first time since the mid middle of November last year. Up 13-0, causing turnovers at Sanford Stadium. We start the second quarter at Sanford Stadium with Sanford on the field on offense on a second and three. Flags on the field as Jalen Thomas makes the first down catch. Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang. I'm Taylor Zarzer, proud to be back in Athens today. Replay second down. Got a holding on the offensive line. It was otherwise a really good blitz pickup by the Sanford up front. Michael Williams, who was lined up on the line of scrimmage, he read this back out of the backfield flexed out into space was able to make that play. You don't want to compare him to anybody, but <laughs> he looks like a first round draft pick with the way he's built. Judd Hockett makes the catch, but dogs are all over him. Robert Beal, I mean, we talk about guys that are able to put their hand in the dirt and then go play in space. Robert Beal, they know, this defensive front knows, offenses aren't gonna hold the ball versus them. The ball's gonna come out. So they are wisely reading the quarterback. They're getting out there making plays in the flats. Third and 10. Myers completes it to Ty King, but short of the first down. Ty Key Smith wrapped him up. Ty Key Smith, what they're trying to do is get him kind of caught up in traffic. Smith did a good job of tracking him all the way to the edge. So Sanford's going to have to punt for the third time. Also had a lost fumble in the first quarter. Lad McConkie is standing back there deep. A touchdown run and a touchdown catch over in Atlanta last week. A fair catch here at the 28-yard line. Stetson Bennett, Lad McConkey, and the Dogs are back on offense when we come back. Gary Noka in studio. It's gotten eventful in Pittsburgh, Texas, Tennessee, to down to Pitt, 10 zip. Jabari Small uh, into the end zone from a yard out. Now the highlight you're going to remember if you see it. And that's going to be Gavin Bartholomew just a bit later from Keaton Slovis. Watch Bartholomew go high and over the Tennessee defender. Tennessee just responded with a Brew McCoy touchdown. His first, it's a three point hit lead. Dari, Darnell Washington, eat your heart out. It's a three steps. Oh, they called it, Dari. He stuck the landing and kept running. The Johnny Majors classic going on up there in Pittsburgh, PA. Dylan Bell makes his first catch. 
as a Georgia Bulldog, the freshman from Houston. Here's that Darnell Washington hurdle. Look at this. Craziness over an Oregon defender. 6'8", 280, and can do this. Business decision. Go low, man. Go low and hope it works out. Stetson Bennett's already found eight different receivers, and he hasn't found Darnell Washington yet. Here's Kiaris Jackson out in the free and clear, and he gets a first down. It's a pickup of 16 yards. Wondering if Jackson has that burst yet. There's a sign. Definitely see it there. Great job by Lad McCock, and he's sticking with it. He got spun all the way around that man. And the rotation up front continues. Amarius Mims still in there at right tackle. Broderick Jones out. Warren McClendon in at left tackle. Now Devin Willock in at left guard. 53rd career catch for Kieris. This is Milton inside the 45 and just about a yard and a half shy of another first down. Good job at the left side of the line. Vincent McClendon being over there. Willick, two new faces, not their usual position. They do a good job of capturing the edge. Look at Willick climb up. Look at the edge easily. Milton with a first down run over to the Samford bench. How about Georgia messing with the tempo? They did this a little bit versus Oregon. We're over here trying to cram in replays, and they want to get over the football. You don't really know. They don't stay on the gas all the time. They'll stand on the gas some, they'll come off it, they're a little bit more methodical, and then they can go hyper fast as well. And also sub in running backs play by play as all of this is going in, going on. Milton out, McIntosh in. Stay loose, Dejan. Be you next. That's right. Milk the play clock here down inside of two seconds. Bennett play action. Doesn't like what he sees. He improv against the Ducks last week. It worked. And he makes something out of nothing here to McIntosh down to the 32. Something out of nothing, but still something. Didn't try to force it downfield. Kind of slid into that rush a little bit. That time Thomas Neville off the edge, and he slid to his left where Neville was coming if he just kind of sits in there for one more second. Fran Tarkenton have a smile on his face somewhere watching this new age Georgia Bulldog scramble all over the field last week in the dome and this week here. Stetson Bennett dumps it off to McIntosh, breaking a tackle, first down. Manuel Flowers forces him out, but not before Kenny gets 11 more. I know we've mentioned him before. Darnell Washington in pass protection now. He's big and physical coming across that line of scrimmage. McIntosh has 12 catches already on the season as Jackson Meeks makes another grab. Nice turn and run, too, near another first down. Jackson Meeks in there getting some more touches and looks. Largely owing would have to be the fact that A.D. Mitchell, who Stetson Bennett says probably the twitchiest guy we've got on this roster. He lasted one play in this game before he went out with an ankle injury. There's Washington coming in on the right side of your screen. Dejon Edwards is in front of Washington, and here's Dejon following Darnell. Inside the five, down near the three. It's just a mass of humanity, and it's just unfolding. It's like an avalanche. You've got those big bodies already to the right side of the formation, and then you're going to get some pins and pulls. You get an outside lineman or an adjacent tight end to block down, and then that inside lineman, he's able to pull outside and lead upfield. And all those bodies on smaller bodies in space. I'm not great at physics, but I don't think that's fair necessarily. Second and four for the dogs on the doorstep. Fake to Dejan over the top. Touchdown, Dylan Bell.
just been a complete offensive performance today. It's been a complete offensive first six quarters for the Georgia Bulldogs in 2022. Stetson Bennett, six of six for 49 yards on that drive, culminating with Dylan Bell's first ever touchdown grab as a Georgia Bulldog. A freshman from Houston, Texas, helps Georgia out to a 20 to nothing lead. Back here in Athens, the Georgia Bulldogs with a 20 0 lead over the Samford Bulldogs as we get ready for the kick and this defense to head back on the field again. We talked a lot going into the week about the motivation for this defensive unit. I was told that after the Oregon game a week ago, these guys were going back into the locker rooms going, yeah, what questions? What questions were y'all asking about being able to replace us with NFL talent with the uh, dominating performance that they put on against the Ducks a week ago? Chris Smith talked to us about how they've maintained that motivation. He said Coach Smart talked a lot about how last year doesn't do anything for us this year, told stories about teams that he's been on or teams that he's seen that have won championships and then gotten complacent the next season. Of course, everybody knows Kirby Smart does a really good job of communicating that they are still the hunters, not the hunted. Chris said it fires me the heck up every single time, guys. It's a hell of a report there, Alyssa, because it, I think, speaks to what the identity of this Georgia team is in 2022, what they're trying to discover about these players. Kirby Smart says you have to coach each of them differently. Some may be comfortable with coming off a national championship, but the ones you just talked about are hungry. Ayers airs it out, but over the head of DJ Reyes, a former Alabama receiver, it's second down. Now, as much as you're coaching every player differently, Kirby Smart also said, Stinch, we haven't had any adversity yet. Yeah. Told Alyssa that before the game today, we're going to run into some at some point. Alabama certainly ran into some today. When is Georgia going to face that in 2022 is the question as Jay Stanton doesn't get much. I'll tell you a surefire thing. They're going to face adversity in practice. We witnessed that firsthand. This coaching staff is going to try to find ways to create adverse circumstances for this team to perform in during the week. Make it hard. That's the whole goal. So by the time you get to game day, it's the easiest day of the week. Kirby Smart has a PA system. He is in there coaching every single play. Third and nine, and Georgia's all over this one. It was Jalen Carter in the backfield. He just can't do much with 88. Uh, this time he's standing up. They've got him almost as a stand-up rush in. Really on he's over a guard. Just so versatile. A guy that can flex, he can play inside, he can play outside. He just works right inside. You can see the right guard. Luke Burns is thinking he's got help from his center. You see him look right away. Hey, man, where are you? Don't leave me on an island with this guy. It's kind of hard to believe he's only started a few games in his collegiate career. It's reminiscent of some of the great linemen we saw out of Tuscaloosa, ones that Kirby Smart coaches. Jonathan Allen, he referenced. Marcel Darius. Yep. Bradley Porcelato is on the field for the fourth time, and the Aussie punter sends it down there to McConkie. He makes the grab at the 36. Kirby Smart said, be ready to run with it, lad. Here he goes inside Sanford territory. Georgia all over the Samford Bulldogs in the home opener. Our Senior Bowl scouting staff was at 16 games in week one and one of the most impressive performances of the week had to be Georgia quarterback Stetson Bennett. I think the narrative coming into the year, at least in the media, was that Stetson Bennett is more of a good college quarterback than a legitimate pro prospect, and I think that has to change. Uh, Bennett showed great comfort in that offense last week was extremely accurate, allowed players to, to run after the catch. His arm looks stronger, though more, more zip and velocity on the football. And we know he can run. He's, he's done that his entire career, running around. And, and people on the staff there at Georgia say he's run a laser four or five times. So he's going to run well in the spring as well. So I think the narrative starts to shift a little bit right now coming out of that week one performance. Stetson Bennett is a legitimate pro prospect and not just a good field good score. Helps when you got a guy like 
Big Brock Bowers go up the ladder for 18 more. Right on cue, right? How about a report on Brock Bowers? He's got one more year <laughs> before he's eligible. But you can see what they were talking about. Todd Munkin said, look, right now, our best slot receiver is Brock Bowers. That is a huge statement when you've got a talent like Akiris Jackson on this roster. Inside the 30-yard line, down to the 26. Bennett, back to the air. That's the 11th different receiver he's found today. That's Darnell Washington. There is a flag down. I tell you, Taylor, this is a luxury for Georgia. They live in 12 personnel. There are two tight ends from a personnel standpoint on the field almost all the time. And it's because they can flex number 19 out so easily. They did it with Darnell After as well. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 98. After this is to the goal and an automatic first down. Joshua Mathiason with the penalty for Samford. Bennett, of course, the Walter Camp National Player of the Week for his performance last week. He said, last year, everyone rightfully mentioned our defense. We want an identity that everybody talks about all over the country this year on offense. You could tell that they felt as if they could contribute more last year, and they certainly want to lead the charge this year. Fake to Mac McIntosh, and Bowers takes the toss down to the eight. There's another flag. Double pass complete to Brock Bowers. Picked up a couple of the flag. Holding offense number 73. 10-yard penalty, replay first down. That goes on Xavier Trust. They'll back him up, Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I think I can speak for all of us when I say that we were so impressed in our meeting with Stetson Bennett yesterday. One of the questions that I asked him was, what have you learned about yourself in your entire collegiate career from where you started to where you are now the last season and a half here at Georgia? And he took a long pause and he said, you know, I've been keeping busy. This building's a really good buffer in dealing with the noise. He used a Winston Churchill quote that he said he keeps going back to. That quote being, to improve is to change, to be perfect is to change often. He said, I thought I used to play football for other people. Turns out I love it for myself. Hey, John Edwards gets down to the 15. And, and the other thing that he told you, Alyssa, is that he keeps this notebook where he writes all these different notes down about his experiences playing football. And Stinchy told Alyssa that he drew out every scenario you can have on a 100-yard field in football, meaning, and what he learned by that was I don't have to get all of it at once. I can get two yards here, five yards here, three yards there. He's learning that to be a little bit more patient with the football in 2022. This is second and 15 for Stetson. Across the middle, good pass to McIntosh. Down to the eight, and he gets some of it, not all of it, setting up a third down. He's talking about that some, where the defense only has 11 players. He's like, I know that's an obvious statement, but the point also was, you know, you start to see shapes. You start to see the way the field and the game will unfold based on if they bring pressure from one side, then they're going to be inefficient somewhere else. It's a really tightly strung economy. You can't borrow from one spot without compromising another. 10 straight completions for Stetson, setting up this third and eight. He's patient, throws to the back corner, and Mel Bell rather cannot make the grab. Fourth down. Many incompletions in this game, but we've seen a couple, a couple in the end zone. Incidentally, that's well defended. A hand up, a great job by Fred Flowers of breaking up that would-be pass. So if Jack Podlesny makes this 26-yard field goal, he'll have the number one field goal percentage in the history of Georgia football passing Rodrigo Blankenship. Right through there. 23-0 dogs on top with 5.01 to go until halftime.
Dari Doring to Keo. We're going to see you. Auto Owners Insurance halftime report coming up. How Bama escaped. How Tennessee is right now in a battle. So is Texas A&M, but how about Georgia to this point? Well, like Rick Ross, our boys Destin Bennett's into distribution. 11 different receivers Ooh, in the first half. Oh, I like that. Only four to four total yards by Sanford. Yes. Defense is playing well. You notice that side of the ball. <laughs> CD, Takeo, and Dari coming up on the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Pod Lesney's kick does go out of bounds, so Samford will get good field position. You know, I was wondering, Stinch, forecast for rain today. What kind of environment will we have? Dog fans all over this place. 59th straight sellout, dating back to 2012. The record is 64, and they're going to break that. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, at the end of this season against Georgia Tech, they're going to break that. And yeah, as we said in the open, almost 15,000 days since the last time they played a home opener as the defending national champion. So it's time to celebrate where this program is currently. Hires is too high into the Sanford bench. I have to imagine that amount of times played a role in the fact that people were willing to brave the would-be weather that isn't. You see the new National Championship reference 2021, long time coming. Jalen Thomas past the 40 yard line. A pick up a five. I think the key now, kind of like what Kirby Smart learned at Alabama Stench, is the idea isn't to get one of those, it's to get a bunch of them in the next 10, 15 years. Put your program in position to compete for those on an annual basis. No question, that is the measuring stick. You see Sanford, they said, check with me, looking over to the sidelines. Coach is controlling this next snap. Hatcher changes the formation at the last moment. Here comes the pressure. Good job by Hires to get it out. Ty King makes the completion, but he is short of the first. Jalen Carter once again with the pressure. Now he's just beating a double team. He splits a double team. On fourth down, it's incomplete. Javon Bullard almost had the pick. Sanford rolling the dice near midfield. Trying to jam one in there. Great job. Quick trigger by Javon Bullard to break up that pass attempt. Early, we're looking at the average starting field position for the Georgia offense. It was their own 41. Now they get the ball on the plus side of the field. Now it's their own 44 average start. Here goes McConkey. Bennett will hand it off to Milton, and Kendall will get to the 40-yard line. Hard to believe that Kendall had hamstring issues in August. He looks fresh here in September. 50 yards rushing and a touchdown last week and also a touchdown catch. That's a great point. Yeah, he has. He's looked good, especially when he's been able to get loose. He doesn't look nearly as guarded as he did in week one versus Oregon. That's a nice push on the left side of the offensive front. Eight carries for 43 yards for the junior from Fresno, California. Stenson threw that wide of Kiaris Jackson, third down. Really the first bad ball we've seen from him today. They had the one overthrow, right, on the first possession. You see that? That'll happen on a deep ball, but that one, just an errant pass. You can see him afterwards. Looking over to the sidelines, you see Kirby Smart. Mike Bobo also assisting with the offense. It's been terrific on third down last week and today. And on third and six, he's got all day, and this one's a good one to Kiaris. Inside the 25 with Cortland Marsh all over Jackson. It's a 17-yard pickup. Once again, we see Kyrus Jackson. Now they're targeting him. We saw an earlier target on the previous one. They were just trying to swing it out there to the edge. 
Bad ball from Bennett. Nice ball that time down the field. Kyrus Jackson right along the boundary. Great body control. Nice focus getting his feet in bounds. We're talking about that offensive line rotation. Warren Erickson, he was in on the previous rotation, a starter a season ago, in there at center. Looks like a little bit early along the offensive front. Ball start. Offense number 59. Five yard penalty. Still first half. Talking earlier in the broadcast inch about Broderick Jones, Warren McClendon, and Amarius Mims. The three tackles that are fighting for two starting spots that will probably materialize in the weeks to come. Yeah, man, you can tell they're just trying to figure it out. Who's going to get the most reps? I don't know that there's a big drop off when you put any one of those guys in, but they're definitely trying to keep them all active and engaged in the offense. Jones on the left, Mims on the right. Bennett across the middle, wide open to his big tight end target. Down to the one goes Bowers. 27 more for the man that was the best freshman in America last year. Nobody saw him coming a year ago. He's got a target on his back this year. Watch McIntosh coming. Sanford was ready for it. Good tackle by Hardeman and Emmanuel Flowers. Great job right there on the edge. We've seen Sanford a couple times get in the red zone. They've been able to bow their necks defensively. They've made it difficult for Georgia, forcing those couple of field goals. Rosemi, Jack Saint, and McConkey are at the top of your screen. That's Bowers and Washington on the right side of the line with McIntosh behind Bennett. And Kenny walks in. since you realize Georgia's playing an FCS opponent today. They're six for six scoring today on all six possessions. But they did this against Oregon last week. Right, yeah, that, it was amazing. The coaches talked about it. They just felt like they, there was very little to no pushback, resistance in that football game. Carved right through the Ducks. Haven't been as efficient, right? They've scored on their possessions. They get the red zone, they've kicked some field goals. Nice look here. Pull the guard all the way across. A play action, not an RPO. Intended to get the ball downfield, and you sneak Bowers out, who's attached at the end of the line of scrimmage. We talked about how much he's done. Take Ratledge in there at right guard. They only got a couple snaps out of him a season ago. He's healthy now. A clean walk into the end zone for your running back, Kenny McIntosh. guys milking every moment in Athens right now. Chance, he might be number one in the country in the Associated Press and Coaches Bowl by the time we get to Monday. Alabama fought for their lives for 60 minutes in Austin today, outlasting Old offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian in Texas, 20 to 19. Wherever fun happens, Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. chance today to salute some great dogs from the past in the second half so hope you stay tuned for that and we'll continue also to look at the potential of some of these great players at the next levels Jim Nagy the Reese's Senior Bowl director 
available to us each week, does such a great job. And Josh Brooks is going to hang out with us in the second half, the athletic director here. He should get his perspective on some of the things that have happened in college football, as you see. Sanford's running the football. They're one in the half. Georgia calls a timeout. See if they can get a little bit more offensive work here in the first two quarters. Pretty efficient. And you know, we talk about it. So far, Georgia with 16 first down. Sanford with just the one. Obviously, a couple of short fields, turnovers. Michael Hires, who played really well week one. They got a top 10 victory over Kennesaw State in their opener, but it has been very difficult, and as any would anticipate versus this defense, regardless of the new faces. And Jay Stanton dives ahead for a few more. He is not made it to the first down, so George will call another timeout with 44 seconds to go. It'll be 30 seconds. That's the Redcoat Marching Band decked out today. It is a bit cooler, not cool. <laughs> no, but uh, you're right. But I mean, a bit cooler. Yeah, we're, we're a month early, at least, weather-wise. I mean, this is a great day for football. It really is. To be week two of the season, you should have been sweating through your socks by now. But we said it's almost pleasant. We did that in Oxford last week. Yes, we did. Evidently, everybody was doing that in Austin, Texas today. When I was running those stadiums to get back up here, I would probably have needed an IV back. It was like it was last week. Alyssa never likes hearing us talk about the weather since she's always in the elements down there. Let's see if Hires, nope, nowhere close. Nolan Smith and friends came in there to prevent the first down. George is going to call their last time out. Yeah. Time out. Georgia. Now, Chris Hatcher did text from his buddy Kirby Smart this week and say, take it easy now, fella. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of blitz in him. I mean, some, right? Well, Smith does a good job playing that block, squeezes down inside, comes off on that quarterback, hires, pulls it. Going to rethink that strategy versus this defense. Kirby definitely not taking it easy on Hatch, right? Trying to squeeze in one more shot in his end zone. Maybe he will in the second half, but he, he's, he's playing to, to his coach. own standard. Yeah. That's right. Wants to see what his team can do in a hurry up situation. As he was telling Alyssa before the game, if we're not going to get adversity from the other team, we need to create our own throughout the football game. So we'll see if. Georgia can tack on a few more points with no timeouts and 38 seconds left. For Salato. Punts this one to the sideline. McConkey lets it go, Mr. Cinchcomb. Well, you know, there's a lot of great places to go in the Southeastern Conference when you're in these respective towns. So SEC Eats, and last night, we went to one of the finest restaurants in Athens, Georgia, a staple, the Last Resort Grill. And I will tell you, it's not just great food that you get during the main course. There are people that walk in there, and we had to elbow our way to this little pie chest that they've got, which is, it's eye-popping. There it is, right there. It's a game changer. It's hard to even focus on what it is that you're gonna order for the meal and of course Melissa completely blew it and did not go she's she invited tonight she's invited tonight okay. I'm gonna take my wife and children there to the last resort right after the game which is the first option as you're saying in Athens Stetson drops it picks it up throws ahead to McIntosh and he's short of the first down I'm, I'm being slandered right now. I actually asked no, Stinch, fact. how is Grindhouse Burgers? I'm going there immediately. He was like, yeah, 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 go. And then he made the reservation. So burgers were great. Powers got a hand on it, but incomplete with 10 seconds left. Scary play with the ball on the ground. I did not say go. I said the burgers are good, but I never said go. She's got another shot tonight. We'll see if she takes the invitation. Fix it. <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> Highly, highly questionable. No, I, I know. You, listen, Betsy Zarzer, Katie Zarzer, and Grace Zarzer will be there. I, I know you'd rather hang out with them. So the extent, the invitation <laughs> has been extended. I'm hitting the road after this treatment. 
Dejan Edwards is in the backfield on this third and one with 10 seconds left. Bennett across the middle to Bowers to the 46-yard line with four seconds left. He can block it to get another playoff. But I'm not sure Mr. Podlesny can kick it 63, 64 yards, can he? No, I think this will be, well, you see him. Looks like they're going to have another out there, so you'll see he's going to take a shot at the end zone. I will say Bennett has been high on some throws. I mean, you heard Jim Nagy talking about it earlier. One of the things he does a great job of is throwing a ball where you can run after the catch. That time stopped Bowers on the throw because it was high. He's been high on a couple of occasions. Why not throw it to Big O here? He needs to be high to that guy. Last play of the half. Stetson needs to have a spot to throw it from. Now he chucks it up there. And it's incomplete. Washington and Rosemary Jack Saint had a shot at it. Boy, is that guy fun to watch. Stetson Bennett, 20 completions in the first half and came that close to a 21st. Just about everybody in the stand stood up because they knew they had some big bodies down there. There's a decent chance if that ball's high, it's a real shot. Georgia could have come down with it. As it is, Sanford Bulldogs get their stops, but not without forfeiting some points here in the first half to the home team. Top scorer wins a football side by been at 20 of 28 passing, 252 yards and a touchdown. Georgia Athletics. Found 11 different receivers in the first half. And here's Kirby Smart talking to Alyssa. Coach, you were just talking to your quarterback. What were you saying to him? Well, be smart there at the end. If it's not there, throw it away. We just want to take a shot to the end zone. I don't need him to do all that. What did you make of your defense? One first down for Stanford so far. When we started fast, doing some good things on the perimeter, Got to get some more turnovers and force those guys into bigger mistakes. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Complete football by Kirby Smart's program at the minute. It is 30 to nothing, dogs. Here comes the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report with our good friend, Dari Noka. Teasy. The home opener in Athens has not disappointed. A sellout crowd has watched their Georgia Bulldogs Get out to a 30-0 start over the Samford Bulldogs on this rainy afternoon in Athens. He's Matt Stinchko. Melissa Lang is down there between the hedges. I'm Taylor Zarzer. Don't you remember when they said Stetson Bennett was a game manager? <laughs> 20 completions in the first half, 10 in a row. It was never even a true description. It's never been less true than it has been so far this season. You look at the efficiency at which he typically plays, and. You know, the real lone blemish, I guess you're going to say, is a couple of high throws, but otherwise he's putting in position where his receivers can still come down with the football. He is far from a game manager. No, and the defense has been terrific as well, shutting out Samford in the first half. They haven't allowed a touchdown all season yet. In fact, it's now time for kind of a big deal brought to you by Old Trapper. With all the line of scrimmage advantages that Georgia has, they still brought some pressure early in this game, but they can win one on one Throughout this Georgia's game, they'll continue to be able to find ways to dominate up front. They've harassed Samford all game. Just one first down and 59 total yards that Georgia gave up in the first half. would think that we're going to see some other Georgia Bulldogs here in the second half, like Carson Beck, Brock Vandegrift, and who knows, even Gunnar Stockton at quarterback. Zach Williams is kicking it deep to Kiaris Jackson, kicks it over his head. Georgia starts at the 25-yard line. And Stetson is coming out at least for the first drive of the third quarter. It was interesting in talking to the coaches last week. You know, as quickly as the game got out of hand, they had intentions of playing at least three quarterbacks. 
Oregon ended up going on a long drive there in the second half and stifled that opportunity. You only saw Bennett and Beck. But Bennett able to come out here and open up the second half of this game. Want to keep him fresh. You got the game, Gamecocks up in Columbia next week. Another home game against Kent State before the schedule. Starts to get more challenging in October. Kendall Milton around the left side is past the 35 and past the 40. Ty Hardiman pushes him out, but 16 more for Mr. Milton. That's the best run of the day for Georgia. Coming in that, that's the longest run of the season, even. Haven't really needed a long run yet, as they've just thrown the football all over the lot. First six quarters of the year. But Kirby Smart said, let's make it a point to establish that ground game today. And I think that's clearly an emphasis here on this drive. Maybe that's part of the reason since the starters are still in, is to establish that running game throughout this possession. I think there's no question. You go out there, turn it into a nine on seven inside run drill. Do it versus an opponent. See if you can execute when it matters. Albeit when you're in control of a football game, it's always different when the scoreboard's lit up. You cannot simulate it in practice. Dejon Edwards is in as Milton goes out. Dejon gets the first down. I found it humorous that we did uh, Georgia's playing at South Carolina next week. We did that game in Columbia two years ago. Dejon was the fifth string tailback that day. Completely ended the game. The last nine minutes of the game, ran for over 100 yards. This guy's been waiting his turn. He's advanced from fifth string to third string, but he's going to get plenty of reps in 2022. Stands next to Bennett as Stetson surveys the field. Wide open is Tarnell Washington. Climbs the ladder down to the 20 yard line. One of the biggest men in all of football, 28 yards. Downfield throw for Big Darnell. It's a catch in really the back half of that football with those big old mitts of his. He's done a day's work. We talked about him numerous times in the first half blocking. He looks like he should be in a science fiction movie. <laughs> yeah. When he's out there running, it looks like you should be looking for like a jockey somewhere looking for his horse. Not supposed to do that when you're this big. McConkie catches it. Ford hits the grass, and Hardeman makes the tackle down at the 15-yard line. You open up the possession, kind of tenderize the defense. A couple of runs, big long run to open it up. And then you take a shot downfield. So many weapons in this Georgia offense. Perhaps that might be the biggest challenge. The previous play is under video review. Wondered it may be that ball hit some of this beautiful Georgia grass. We'll take a look. Ron Leatherwood and Randy Watkins are here today. Wayne Winkler will get a look into that camera too. What did you see here, Stench? Yeah, it looked awful low. The question is, I don't know if we can quite tell from that look. I can't tell if it skipped off the turf or not. I don't know. To me, it looks like McConkey taught. He caught the front after video of that ball. The pass has been complete. Oh, okay. It'll be second down at the 20 yard line. Yeah. So I'm 0 for 1 this year. <laughs> Fans don't like it. We should get a booth cam of your facial expression when I say, What did you see there, yeah. Stitch? Say what? It doesn't matter. It actually, it does matter. Because whatever it is that I'm going to say, 100% of the time, it will be something other than that. Oh, the old kiss of death. Dogs back in the red zone on second and 10. Washington, at least for the moment, lined up next to Bennett. 
Jackson in motion. McIntosh running into his own guys gets a yard. Sanford's had some good run defense downs. I gotta tell you, big Seth Simmer, that guy's done a good job in the middle. He's had a couple of nice reps, collapsing the pocket, playing blocks, and getting down the line of scrimmage. Same on the backside, Tate Ratledge. He just beat him there. inside, yeah. Simmer's a transfer from Dartmouth, but originally from Powder Springs, Georgia, so you know he's decided to be back in his home state. Third and nine for Stetson Bennett. I think this might be his last possession of the game. All day, nothing open and has to take the sack. Nathan East, all SOCON first teamer, sacks him for a loss of 17. You know, and East was just sitting there, kind of green dog. He was up in the line of scrimmage, and the green dog is, if you see somebody release, you might pick him up in coverage. If you see the quarterback pull it down, then you trigger and blitz. That's ultimately what happened. Looked like he had Kyrus Jackson over the middle initially. Well, Podlesny just became the most accurate kicker in Georgia history. Number 44 is now wearing, correction, number 96 is now wearing 44. Zion Logue, the other number 96, has to switch to 44. This is Pod Lesney from 54, and it's just short. Josh Brooks, the athletic director at UGA, is going to join us coming up next here in Athens. Ten thirty-four to go, third quarter. Dogs lead Samford thirty to nothing in the home opener here in Athens. And we've got Josh Brooks, the athletic director. Good to see you, my Great friend. Great to see you. Yeah. Thanks for having us yeah. back here in Athens. Feels like it's been forever, Stinch, uh, since we've had a home game here to see Georgia play in in, in Sanford Stadium. I know you you love being back. Yeah, and one of my first things as AD was trying to keep Stinch away as much as possible for, <laughs> for home games. Yeah. It's hurtful, but you've because been very successful. It cost me meals, cost me tickets, things like that. So we've been trying to get other crews in here, so I'm sorry it's affected you. Nazir Stock Stackhouse is in the backfield there. Another tackle for a lost. I know that the football program is riding the wave of a national championship. How about the entire university? Yeah, I mean, and that's just it. The, the impact football has on the entire university from admissions, and obviously we've had a great, a great run with under President Moore's leadership with the enrollment going up and the standards are going up, but football has an impact on it as well. And hopefully that championship mentality will bleed over in all programs in athletics. I know that's what you'd like to see. Hires almost had it picked off. Stackhouse is in the backfield, and that's big Malachi Starks, the true freshman who was so good last week. Tell us how that maybe has impacted all of the other athletic programs. Yeah, well, it all starts at recruiting, and 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 now when we have gay days like this and the student section is full, we've got recruits from all other sports here visiting. So they see that energy, they see that passion, especially from the student base. So it, it helps us in recruiting across the board. And you, know, you look at winning the championship last year under the current college football playoff format, but now there's a commitment to expanding that. What are your thoughts on the impact that that expansion will have on the game? Yeah, so there's a lot of nuts and bolts to get into of how that's gonna impact the season, right? because now it could be an even longer season. You could have a first round game at home. There's a lot to unpack. I'm all for an expansion of getting more teams opportunities, making more games exciting later in the year, but there's a lot of details we've got to get into from the logistics of how you're going to pull that off, that number of games late in the year. That's an excellent point. There's been speculation that maybe we could see that newly expanded playoff earlier than 2026. We'll find out if that's the case. I like that candid answer we just got from Josh. I'm wondering if one day he's in charge of the playoff. <laughs> if he'll be as brutally honest with us. I'll nominate him. <laughs> no, I think I'd be biased at that point. I, I'm going to be voting. They're going to, what do they do, kick you out of the room and they talk about your school? That's so, right. Yeah, so. That's true. You would be recused yeah. almost yeah. permanently. Yeah. Constant recusal. Josh, speaking of the current program, tell us a little bit about working with Kirby Smart on a daily basis. This guy's standard is so much higher than I think anybody would ever recognize. Yeah, and I think what that does, it brings out the best in all of us. We know that that standard, 
is everyone from the custodian to myself and everyone in between, we know that championship mentality and standard. And it didn't just stop after we won the national championship. It continues on the next day and you never take a day off and it's there's no complacency in anything we do. You've been around some pretty sporty coaches, right? I mean, you were there around a Jimbo Fisher, mm -hmm. they're around a Nick Saban. What are those commonalities that you've been able to observe over the course of your career and working with national championship winning coaches? Yeah, so I, I was blessed as a student to be able to work directly for Coach Fisher and then under Coach Saban as head coach. And you see those same traits in Coach Smart. And it's just this relentless commitment to doing everything 100%. It does, there's nothing that's ever done halfway. It's a full commitment to whatever it is. If it's a walkthrough practice, it's the same intensity as the, the, the first practice of the season or anything in between. And I think, again, it brings out the best in all of us, even myself. It's the 12th different receiver Stetson Bennett's found today. Dominic Blaylock on the last play. Marcus Rosamy, Jack Saint with the first down grab there. You might need to start working on the Bennett statue. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy that was a walk-on a few years ago that no one ever thought. I'm still raising money for the Stinchcomb Brothers statue. <laughs> that well, I'm, I, I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think is that one right outside the restroom? It's I actually think. outside of Ad Drug, if, where if, it's just a bench <laughs> with two guys eating a cheeseburger. If John is watching, I know he's like he's a little bit bigger than Matt's, but <laughs> incredible to watch the rise of, of Stetson Bennett left to go to a junior college, comes back. He's an all-world player and almost got Oscar Delp, the brand new tight end there. What do you make of what Bennett's done in his time at Georgia? You know, you got to love the young man. And um, I've enjoyed getting to know him and watch his story and watch the progression of his career. And he's just someone who just does all the little things right, you know. And and uh, he he's just a great role model for. I've got three boys. I want my young men to grow up to be like him. That just never give up, don't take no for an answer, and to push through even when people doubted him and kept kept working and kept grinding. Milton gets free, and he's back into Sanford territory. Now in your career, you haven't always been at the Power Five level. You've been in athletic administration at smaller schools, not power five schools. What role do games like this one today have on the overall college football landscape? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, let's be honest, it's important for your budget. I spent a lot of years at Louisiana Monroe, and games like this helped us balance our budget. Two games like this for a school like Louisiana Monroe could be three and a half million dollars total, which is almost, you know, 10 to 15 percent of their their budget, 20 percent of their budget for a year. So that means a lot. And look, Again, I was here at Monroe in 2007 when we upset Alabama. So it only takes one game like that every number of years to give you hope and, and incentive to, to go knock off a big school like this. Louisiana Monroe versus Alabama next week here on SEC Network. Oh, wow. Blood, by the way, uh, to your point about how big of a deal these home games are, tell us a little bit about your feelings about this crowd today at Sanford Stadium. We were wondering about weather today, you're playing Sanford, Capacity crowd once again, sellout streak continues. Yeah, and it's just a testament to the Bulldog Nation. And I want to give a special shout out to our students today. We had a completely full student section today, which is tremendous when you think about the forecast and everything that was going on today. People thought it'd be raining, and just the threat of rain usually does it a massive impact on the crowd. And the fact that we had a full student section here um, today just speaks volumes of what. Yeah. <laughs> Give that man a bone. <laughs> I'm having visions of what my children are going to be doing when they're in college now seeing this. It seems reasonable. Maybe he's like a, like a what would it be, a paleontology or yeah. archaeology Well, major? one of my sons is down being one of the water boys, and he's been dancing on the sidelines. I had to send a message down, tell Davis to stop dancing on the sidelines. <laughs> Dejon Edwards doesn't get much. The nylon Morzet made his first ever catch on the play before that, the freshman from Stone Mountain, now the 13th different receiver that Stetson Bennett has found today. There he is. How about your excitement level, Josh, for the basketball, men's and women's programs, baseball program? Give us a little forecast for Georgia Athletics this year. Yeah, two new coaches on the uh, basketball side. Um, we introduced them to the crowd today. Excited for both those programs. We had some recruits here. and. Uh, you know, two coaches who have a true you know, a history of winning, been successful everywhere they've been, and they bring a level of intensity that really excites you. And I cannot wait to get both those seasons started. All start. Offense number seven. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. 
Gilbert. Offside, so move Georgia back five yards. On a would-be fourth down attempt with that. You know, when you look at it, the role the national championships have on an overall program, what are the Number ways? 96 is now wearing 44. 96 is at 44, everybody. Zion look. The, the, the role that, or the measures that you all are taking to celebrate and commemorate a national championship, but also knowing that you've got a program that's looking to turn the page yeah. and build yet another one. <laughs> that's the thing when you do when you're dealing with personalities like uh, Coach Smart is that they are focused on the next, so you don't want to dwell. So it's that balance of celebrating and honoring it, but knowing we're moving on into new season. Josh, great to see you. Appreciate you hanging out, my friend. Continued success. Appreciate it. Thanks. Go Glad to, to Avet Brothers concert with my man, Mr. Brooks, soon. We'll even get Matthew to come with us. That's right. We'll be back in just a moment. Battle of the Bulldogs today, third ever meeting. Georgia leading Sanford 30 to nothing. Chris Hatcher, though, going crazy on the sidelines, excited his team got off the field. And we got a new Sanford Bulldog commit. Oh, yeah. Janie Stinchcomb, a middle blocker, headed to Birmingham, Alabama to play for the Sanford Bulldogs. We have a house divided, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The blocking runs in the family, apparently. <laughs> That's right. E.J. Reyes, the former Alabama receiver, gets up to the 20-yard line. Just saw Janie, Addy, Witt, and Jenny here at the game today. Janie, I'm sure, scouting the Samford football team for next season. Judd Puckett. Makes his first grab. You got to be awfully proud of that, my friend. Oh, well, it's a great school. I mean, we were thrilled with that opportunity. She loves the game. We've got a great program, great coaches. Fantastic campus. I mean, really a universal win. We're just excited for her. And to be a Bulldog in Alabama, it's not such a bad combination, right? It was a terrific school with a proud football history, trying to get back to the FCS playoffs this year. Ball stars, offense, number 65, five yard penalty, still first down. Big Austin guys just gets caught leaning. Boy, up in there, he and left guard Chris Noble. You just get a little bit early. You're anticipating that snap facing some really good pass rushers. And as you mentioned, Coach Hatcher was fired up. His team got off the field on a fourth down. Then those penalties backing them up when they were moving the ball, got a first themselves. First and 15, they get the yardage back. As Peyton Ringer gets trucked. Second out. Jamel Walthour, man, that's quite a close from a big body. That's the big difference when you look at this. It's not just size. You see there's a disparity in the level of play. Got guys with big bodies that can run. See number 90 doing that on that play. Stench, Chris Hatcher's in his eighth year. He's six wins shy of the former Heisman Trophy winner at Auburn, Pat Sullivan's school record for wins. And Hatch's teams score more points per game than any coach ever in Sanford history, but they haven't scored today. As Hires throws it into the bench. His team averages over 30 points a game, and that's more than any Bobby Bowden, Terry Bowden, or Pat Sullivan coach team. Consider that. I mean, that's one heck of a run of coaches. We've got a field over there it's named after Bobby Bowden. One of the things that Coach Hatcher talked about, the big change they made on defense, playing with an edge, we saw that today. Running Chris Boone, got a couple of red zone stops, and now his offense trying to find a way to convert. Third and 10, and this one was almost picked off. It was David Daniel Sisavant Vaughn that stepped in front of the football. He tipped it up, Malachi Starks almost got his hands underneath the carrot. She ended up just bringing three, still got a little bit of pressure in Hire's face, and you see Malachi Starks always around the football. Almost comes up with that interception. He's one of the top high school prospects in America. 
Lynn Schumann, the defensive coordinator, said he's struck by how incredibly humble Malachi is. That's Kiaris Jackson, who is on the field as a punt returner for the first time today. They've got McConkey, they've got Jackson, and they've got a 30 nothing lead at home at one of the best college campuses in America. Thirty to nothing, Georgia on top, and it's Carson Beck's turn. Sophomore from Jacksonville, who was five of six last week for 71 yards and a fourth quarter touchdown. Offensive coordinator Todd Munkin says this is what a pocket passer should look like. 6'4", 215 pounds. He said he's making it a point this year to give him a chance to throw the football. He only got in the games to really hand it off a season ago. And Coach Munkin kind of lamented that. He's got Branson Robinson next to him, and he instead slings it out there for a first down completion. That's Morissette again. Kirby Smart said Denylon Morissette had a great week of practice. He's big and pretty in the pocket, there's no doubt. Heavy play action look. Gets that ball out and clean. He can spin it. There's no doubt about it. Not nearly as mobile as a Stetson Bennett, but a nice pocket presence. 16 yards and hands it to Branson Robinson. The true freshman had two carries last week. From Canton, Mississippi, up near Memphis. Germantown High School. Isaiah Richardson with the tackle. Branson Robinson, that dude fills out a uniform. I saw him down there on the field in pregame. Yeah, He's got muscles in his earlobes. Now Beck on the march. Perfect ball to the sideline, finding Jackson Meeks. 14 more. Beck's pass is complete to number nine, Jackson Meeks. Well, pitch and catch. Jackson Meeks, as we saw, got some early reps today for Meeks. Adam I Mitchell coming out. Meeks coming in earlier, does a great job looking that ball in. Toe tapping before he goes out of bounds. Moving the pocket a little bit, let Beck throw on the run as well. This is Robinson again, and he gets inside 25 down to the 23, trying to work his way into the rotation. Mr. Mississippi over here, our super stats man, Kevin Maloney, says that that's a different Germantown than the one I'm used to up near Memphis. This is in Canton, Mississippi. Fair enough. If anybody needs a geography Six lesson on Mississippi, Later Mr. Hosen Maloney will be on <laughs> ESPN Plus after this telecast. Yeah. Kielbasa and sauerkraut, huh? Second and five. Beck swings it to the other side to Bell, who had that touchdown earlier, and he sets up a first and goal. 14 more. Nice run after the catch, Taylor. Great blocking again on the edge. This time, Eric Gilbert going in motion. It's a great job securing it. Oscar Delp as well, another true freshman that guy they're very high on. They just moved the line of scrimmage. Complete performance by Georgia in the home opener today. One more quarter to go. Dorian OK in studio. Let's update what's going on at Kyle Field. 7-7 seven, seven, late. Third, Bryce, Chase Bryce to Henry Pearson. App State takes the lead on AM. and Ensuing kickoff fielded by Devon A-Chain and A-Chain. Going to break a tackle near the sideline. Goes 95 to tie it up, guys. But App State is driving again. AM 151 yards of offense so far. My wow. goodness. Now oh. look at this. Just a 12-minute fourth quarter today. Evidently, that was agreed upon between Coach Smart and Coach Hatcher before the game started. Carson Beck, first and goal inside the 10, fakes the toss, now throws it out there to Robinson. Fights hard to make something out of nothing. Wow, A&M on yeah. the ropes against Appalachian State. Chase Bryce is his third school, now playing for 
App State started his career at Clemson. Of course, they had that game last week against North Carolina. And how about Notre Dame? I know it. Lost at home today to Marshall 26-21. to It's been a wild day, man. You look at the way that Alabama-Texas game unfolded. The Tide escaping with a one-point victory. Back to the end zone. Incomplete. Dylan Bell with a one-on-one -on -one fight with Hakeem Johnson. Good job by Johnson to punch it out of there at the last second. We've seen a couple of plays like that. Hakeem Johnson, earlier it was Fred Hakeem Flowers. Watch him play through the receiver's hands. That's an excellent technique. He had both hands on that football. Hakeem Johnson just played right through his hands, popped that ball out to deny the touchdown reception. Chris Hatcher said, it's about the way we compete today, not about the scoreboard. And you've got to give his team credit for doing that. Back third and goal. Across the middle, looking for Eric Gilbert. He was covered up by the aforementioned Johnson. Fourth down. How about Samford's red zone yeah. defense today, forcing a third field goal attempt? I'll tell you, when we were talking with Chris Hatcher, he was saying we need to get better on defense. We knew that. He went out there, overhauled that side of the, of the field. Chris Boone comes in. He's a well-established, well-respected defensive coordinator. He said, we play with more of an edge. There's no doubt. You know, they haven't folded. You get down the red zone, and they have found a way to stiffen multiple times this afternoon. Podlesny with his fourth go, make of the day. 33-0 Georgia as they get ready for the Gamecocks next week. Prince Charles came to Athens in 1977, of course, now King Charles III. He came here for the Kentucky-Georgia game. He was visiting President Jimmy Carter's home state at that time. Oddly enough, Kentucky won the game 33-0 that day as Prince Charles was going over game plans with Coach Dooley, it seems, <laughs> 45 years ago. Also in attendance that day was the godfather of soul, James Brown, who performed Dooley's Junkyard Dogs at halftime that day. Certainly thinking about the royal family, Queen Elizabeth passing Jerry away after 70 years on the throne. What an incredible life she led. We wish King Charles the best. What do you think Coach Dooley was saying to Prince Charles then? <laughs> yeah, Coach Dooley just turned, uh, just had a birthday this week. Charles, you want to run the toss sweep into the boundary. <laughs> we love you, Coach. Jossette Giles is up to the 28-yard line. Fred Giles on the carry. Proud to be from the same city as that man. What city is that, Taylor? Mobile, Alabama, Matt Stinchcomb. Hate to break it to Coach Dooley, but his McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets lost to my St. Paul Saints a couple weeks ago. I think I just heard him yell a couple of boxes down. Coach is terrific and beloved by all dogs. Yes. Second and seven. Ty King makes the catch. It is kind of crazy to think that the last time Georgia played a home game as a national champion was in 1981. And you think back after they won that 1980 title, you got Herschel coming back as a sophomore. You're thinking in 81 and in 82, you're going to have a real chance to win another national championship in one of those years. Came so close, it just yeah. didn't materialize. There's no doubt Kirby Smart's team in these years to come are going to have plenty of chances as well. No question. Well, we, we were on the, uh, I was on earlier with the Bulldog Radio Network, and Lauren Smith was asking about that, how hard it is to repeat, and it is incredibly hard. But you just noted, those teams had an opportunity to do it. Deep pass by Quincy Critton, and the new quarterback is caught by Ty King. As he threw it over the freshman, Dalen Everett, 36 yards. How about this ball from Crittenden? Drops it right in. 
You see, he can get his head around to play the ball in the air and tries to play the ball through his arms. Look, that ball almost squeaks out. Instead, Ty King does a great job maintaining possession. Best field position of the day for Samford. And Crittenden will take off, but a flag is in. All star offense number 24. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Tailback Giles. It's Chaz Chambliss coming off the field. Special teamer to big time defensive contributor. The higher defensive staff has been raving about the way he's been performing since camp started in August. Defensive coordinator Glenn Schumann was talking about him a lot in our meeting yesterday about just how good he is, especially in run game. Really rugged player. Britain's in trouble. Keeps the play alive, but incomplete looking for King. Pressure on the play by Bear Alexander, another true freshman. Well, that was an interesting conversation with Coach Schumann yesterday. He's talking about what they look for in linebackers. He's coached some great ones here at Georgia, the linebacker coach, now coordinator. And he was saying how, look, you got to have a, a Mike linebacker, an inside linebacker mindset, but a tool set of like an edge player, an outside linebacker. When you look at those players, that's exactly how they play. Second and 15, no chance there. Is it's Michael Williams, freshman from Columbus, in the backfield against the Ducks last week. Same story in week two. Work, watch him work the twist. It's an end tackle. So the tackle, the defensive tackle, works upfield first, picks the guard and tackle, and allows Michael Williams to slice in there. As you mentioned earlier, it's 6'5", 265. He reminds you of somebody. Well, it, look, I, Trayvon Walker was the first pick of the draft, but just size-wise, sure. you can't help but oh, say yeah. the guy looks like the same kind of football player. No question. Crittenden steps into it, and he gets it out there to Kendall Watson to the sideline. Let's make it fourth and maybe a bit more manageable. Tyke Smith in coverage. Kendall Watson, pretty quiet this afternoon. It's been tough sledding, obviously, offensively. It's Tyke playing a lot more in this game, getting some meaningful snaps. A guy they were counting on a year ago didn't get him because of injury. We'll work him into that secondary. Still seven minutes to go. With a season after Georgia allowed 13 touchdowns, they've allowed zero. And almost eight quarters of play. Wow, good job there as Porcelato gets it to spin a bit. And Fred Flavors downed it. Kiaris Jackson didn't think that any whistle blew, but they are going to call a touchback that he was. His momentum broke the plane. So 6.55 to go, and Georgia will get it back at the 20, up 33 to nothing. Come on back, Kiaris. At history time, my friends. 80 years ago, Georgia star halfback Brink Sinkwich was the first player in SEC history to win the Heisman Trophy. In accepting the award, he said it was one of the two greatest honors of his life. The other was the Marine Corps uniform he was wearing. The Dogs went 11 and 1. They beat UCLA to win the Rose Bowl back in 1942. Frank Sinkwich is honored all over Athens, Georgia. Rightfully so. That 42 team has a plaque on the side of this stadium as well. Beck swings it out there, caught by Muse. He gets up to the 27-yard line. We think of that stench. I mean, really, for 80-plus years, you've had all-time great players playing for this program. Yeah. I mean, you look back at. Some of the Heisman winners, obviously, with Frank Sinkwich. He's on the same team as Charlie Trippi, you know, arguably one of the greatest college football players ever as well. 
There have been some fantastic football. You mentioned Fran Tarkenton earlier. See Jake Scott. There have been some great, great come through this program. Beck tried to run, and Braden Boyle tracked him down. You know, last week, because Oregon ran the last 20 plays of the game without scoring, I might add, we didn't get to see Brock Vandegrift. I wonder if there's enough time for that to happen today. They certainly sounded like they intended for that to be the case, to get him in there and get him some snaps. But with just under six minutes to play, it's going to require a Sanford stop. Ball out. Trouble with the snap, and Morizette picks it up, and George is going to be forced to punt. For just the second time today. Yeah, that was the mesh point between he and Branson Robinson. Carson back in there and see him. It looks like he was trying to pull it clean. Robinson might have come down on that ball, squeezed it early. Back then, press it into his belly there and end up a near turnover. Brett Thorson. This perfect spiral and it's a fair catch by Chandler Smith. 4.58 to go before the dogs are 2-0. We are really excited about this. The critically acclaimed series, True South, returns for its fifth season. And tomorrow, John T. Edge travels to a marble yard in Tompkinsville, Kentucky, to meet the locals, eat good food, and talk about Southern beliefs and identities. 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. All of those shows are recorded at Matt Stinchcomb's house. Hey, Alyssa, what's happening Wednesday night on our favorite show, Out of Pocket? Oh, I'm glad you specified that that was your favorite show. Yeah, Out of Pocket back, SEC Network, 7 o'clock Eastern. Myself and Andrea Carter for an hour every single Wednesday, catching you up on everything we saw the weekend before in the SEC and looking forward in this week's case to week three. I have a feeling, guys, we're going to be showing a lot of highlights uh, from this game today. A lot of great athleticism out there by the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, they look like the cream of the crop in all of college football again in 2022. Crittenden gives himself up at the 31-yard line with Marvin Jones, Xavier Sori, Dalen Everett, and others getting some playing time. Alyssa, what sort of shot do you give the Gamecocks at home in Columbia next Saturday against these guys? Why would you do this to me? Why would you put me on the spot like this? It didn't this? rain. Uh, it's here, been easy today. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, that, that tends to be a competitive matchup when it begins, right? Both of these teams hate each other. Georgia fans have not forgotten about that game in 2019. But as of late, uh, what did Shane Beamer say last year? They got 105 stars. I don't think that's changed uh, based on the performance against Arkansas today. Uh, maybe maybe we'll have a couple minutes of a good game, but I think Georgia is still uh, please, 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 far and away please, please, from everyone else in the SEC East. Look, I know, I'll, I'll leave it there. Alyssa, I know losing by two touchdowns to anybody is not a moral victory, but I, I'm impressed by the way Shane Beamer's team is competing right now. Two former Kirby Smart assistants squaring off today. You had Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks losing today to Sam Pittman and the Arkansas Razorbacks. And I am blown away by what Pittman has done in Fayetteville. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, that might be the, the contender in the West Division. We thought that coming into the season. Alyssa, I, th I know that we talked about, you know, potential contenders with Alabama in the West. And after today, you have to think maybe the Razorbacks have a shot. The Gamecocks and the Dogs at high noon next Saturday. Brock Vandegrift is in the game, the freshman from Bogart, Georgia. He was talked about by everybody coming out of high school two years ago. Red-shirted last year, Prince Avenue High School. They say he's got elite arm talent, tough guy. Looks a lot older than 19, doesn't he? Gets to finish things up in the last 
3.20 of the game. It's Branson Robinson next to him. And Robinson isn't going to get much. I'm on the ESPN app right now, Alyssa. A&M still trailing App State 17-14. Aggies are driving. Stinch and I were in studio on Tuesday with Roman Harper leading up to the show, watching the things that Jimbo Fisher was saying in his Tuesday press conference, talking about how App State is a really talented team. We saw him put 60 on North Carolina last week, so I know one person's not surprised by this. It might be Jimbo Fisher. He's been saying it all week. There's Vandegriff, who threw a good ball, but it goes through Dylan Bell's hands. Well, the Aggies, of course, are ranked sixth in the country. Notre Dame losing today. Alabama, I would think, is going to fall below the dogs in next week's top 10. How about Kentucky, Florida tonight, guys? Yeah, that should be a good one. That's on ESPN at the top of the hour. But Chris Rodriguez is not playing tonight, tailback for the Cats. Vandegrift takes off. Ooh. Just physical short. guy. They talked about him in, in the meetings the other day. Physical guy, a runner. Still don't like seeing him take that shot at the end of the run. And a stop for the Samford defense. Yeah, you know, tonight, coming into the season, you look at Kentucky and Florida, and Florida's somewhat of an un unknown. A lot of hope around Anthony Richardson. They get that huge victory over Utah. So now you're one know what many would have thought, me included, you'd be 0-1. And, and now with no Chris Rodriguez, and the way Kentucky struggled on the line of scrimmage last week, playing on the road, at night, in the swamp, yeah, like the Gators, I think they start the season 2-0. That atmosphere in the swamp last Saturday night was electric. The Gators beat the Utes. Taylor, I want to get your thoughts on this. I asked Stinch earlier in the week, when it comes to this Florida-Kentucky game, who's this bigger for? Billy Napier starting his career at Florida 2-0, or Mark Stoops being able to beat a Florida team in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time in decades? I'm going to go ladder. I I'm going to say, as we're looking at the graphic right now, Alyssa, since the Fran Kersey era, no Kentucky team has been able to win two in a row against the Gators. Coach Stoops can get off to a hot start. Will Levis can run hot and cold, the quarterback of the Cats. If he can win that tonight, they could maybe be the top contender with Georgia. Of course, that could be, I, I think that might be Georgia's toughest matchup all year when they play Kentucky late in the season. That's if they get Chris Rodriguez back and figure out a way to run the football. You know, right now, think about it, in their opener, they ran the ball for 50 yards. That's less than what they ran for versus that Georgia defense a season ago. They've got some serious issues along their line of scrimmage that I don't think anybody anticipated they'd have. Again, that game on ESPN. Over on ESPN2, App State still leads A&M. Under three minutes to go, and App State has the ball. And Tennessee's up four on Pitt on ABC. Just barely into the fourth quarter there. DeAndre Williams running up to the 34-yard line. DeAndre Williams, the ball carrier. Excited to be back covering SEC football again this season, watching all these storylines unfold. We just showed EJ Lightsey, the freshman from Fitzgerald, Georgia. He was on the tackle on that last play, another true freshman. This could be the last play of the game. Let's see what Chris Hatcher wants to do. And how about that big hit by big number 95 for the dog, Sean Washington, getting some playing time and making the most of it. Still playing, both sides. You see, this game come to a close. 12 minute fourth quarter. Sportsmanship there, a lot we gain on both sides. Tennessee Tech waiting on Sanford on the other side of this one. 
The fourth shutout in the last 14 games for UGA. Well, Chris Hatcher was the first guy stench to give Kirby Smart a chance at coaching. And you can see the level of respect those two have for each other. Eight quarters of football. The Georgia defense hasn't given up a touchdown yet. So many questions about it. I think they're answering a lot of them with each passing game. Alyssa standing by with the head coach. Coach, three different quarterbacks, 14 different wide receivers getting involved today. What did you learn about your offense? Well, about our whole team that we're not really mature yet. You know, the goal was to show some maturity, come out and play with composure. We really didn't play very well, especially in the second half. Um, defense kind of overpowered them, but disappointing performance, and uh, we got to practice better if we want to play better. How will you address growing that maturity now into next week? I couldn't hear you. How will you address and coach growing that maturity into next week? Just more practice. You know, we got to get better. Our kids know it. They understand it. It wasn't our best performance, and uh, we got to look ourselves in the mirror and come out and play better, especially in the second half. We got to get in better shape. You mentioned your defense. Haven't given up a touchdown yet this season. What would you make of the way they played today? Played good today. You know, they tried to slow the game down. They didn't take a lot of chances. They tried to get the ball out quick. They were a little outmanned. But guys played hard, created some turnovers. Thanks, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. If you want to be a national champion, you have to play to a standard that no one else is willing to play to. That's what Kirby Smart's talking about there, a 33-0 victory over Samford today. Coming up next, it's SEC Now. So long from Athens.